Good morning, everybody. And I say good morning because of the fact it's morning when I'm recording this, but it may be, not be morning uh, when you actually view this recording. Uh, welcome to the TLC presentation. Uh, it is called Stranded on Adjunct Island in the Sea of Integrity. It's, it's designed to help faculty who are adjunct faculty across the United States and sometimes uh, possibly working on their class from uh, another country as they're traveling, help them understand what, what goes on a in a turn it in report how to use that information how to discover other information and so they feel more connected because they know what resources are out there available to them to support them so my name is jeff meyerholtz i'm the associate director of academic integrity at ashford and there you can see me in the in the presentation we have a lot of information to go through so i've actually placed the agenda randomly throughout the uh the presentation so you know where we are in this presentation so I've highlighted in red what I'm about to talk about in each of those sections so it'll help you follow along one of the complaints I hear a lot of people talk about in Turnitin within Waypoint is when I click to uh, request the similarity report it generates it and it takes forever and that's one of the reasons why people say they just don't use it very often well, what I, my response to them is don't wait on the Turnitin report to actually generate. Actually go over and click on next student. When you click on the next student, once that pops up, then click to generate that Turnitin report and then click next student. Just toggle back and forth between those buttons, generating report, next student. Don't wait for the individual report. Once you get done running all the Turnitin reports for your class and then you return to the original student that you started with, Odds are that report's going to be there waiting for you already, so you don't have to wait on an individual report. Saves a boatload of time. So if you have questions on actually running papers through Turnitin, you can certainly reach out to the Academic Integrity Department or the FSDAs. Uh, they are great resources available to you, and they are the ones communicating with you at the start and during the course uh, as well. So let's talk about what are considered tutoring websites. You'll find from time to time large matches in a paper and you're trying to figure out it, what is causing this large match. One of the nice little drop down menus within Turnitin is called uh, show matches one at a time. So instead of just showing the largest matches, it shows you all the matches individually. And you can see here that there's a number of papers that match this student's submission. So when a student tells you, well, I may be re reusing work from a prior attempt, Look at the dates of it. They're, they're across the board from July, September, November. The odds of this being one student's attempt at a class are very low. So you can actually click on the individual submitted to Bridgepoint Education or even the paper ID and it'll pull up actually what that original submission was in the system. And odds are the title page will have the, the name of the other student who submitted that paper. It's also at the very top blocked out in this image though. Then you can download that if you were going to use that information to submit an IROAD later on. An IROAD is an incident report of academic dishonesty, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But at least you'd have that information. Another useful tool is actually searching the content that you think is a little unusual. You can search it in Google. Here I searched some content using Google. And it didn't really hit on anything major, just some random words. But when I took the exact same information and searched it in Bing, you can see that here are a couple uh, tutoring websites. I'm using air quotes around tutoring again, because they're not really tutoring anybody. They're just copying and sharing papers. Think of, uh, think of these tutoring websites as Napster back in the, the 90s for music. They would share papers, but they also take a profit from doing so. So uh, they, they consider themselves academic websites, but not always are they acting in, in such a manner. So here's an example of me using Google and Bing to actually search content. You can see there's large chunks here that match. And I know that uh, there, there's some sections here highlighted here. I know that there's a lot of papers out there. So I'm going to search the internet to see if there's actually some websites out there selling this content. And here you go. Here's one of the websites that is actually sharing that content and making it available to students to also submit. So when I say there's a lot of websites out there, I mean it. There's a lot of them. These are just some of the common ones. But the ones that I just sort of chuckle at are schoolsucks.com. If you're going there as a tutoring website, you're obviously not trying to be a student. 
So if you have these questions that pop up about these large tutoring websites, you can certainly contact the resources. Or there's also going to be a presentation in the 2018 TLC that is actually sharing the uh, more detailed information about the term paper websites, the tutoring websites that are available. So I'd encourage you to go view that uh, presentation as well. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how do you how do you view and uh, understand Turnitin or I'm sorry recycling within Turnitin. So here is a large match paper. You can see that there's matches over here, but some of those matches appear to be matching uh, the the same student. And you can see actually in the Turnitin report what it's showing is matching is actually highlighting the student's name. I, I've replaced the student's name with Jane Student and the professor obviously is James Q Public. But you can see that the title page is matching. So when you see this, the same student, the same instructor, the same course, odds are that the match that this Turnitin report is showing you is actually a match to a prior paper submitted within that same course, or at least for that course. So it's probably just the, the rough draft or something like that that the student submitted uh, before submitting this final paper. But if you see that it's the same student, different instructor, but it's the same course, odds are the student is actually reusing work from a prior attempt at the class. And if you see it's a different instructor and different course, that will most likely tell you that he's, he or she is recycling from another course. So they may have taken uh, a paragraph or two from their philosophy uh, 208 course and is trying to use this now in their history 103. That would be a, a different conversation, but at least it helps you problem solve where that source material is coming from. So a lot of times I hear instructors say, well, I know this large match is the student's own work, but I don't know what else it matches to. I can't tell for sure. One of the great things about Turnitin is you can actually filter the, the matching content. You can exclude sources. So in here, it's a 94% match. There's a little X over here. If you're saying, I, I know that match is just the student's rough draft, I'm not worried about that. If you click on that, it tells Turnitin to run the exact same report all over again, but ignore that match. It's great. It, it actually shows you what other matches are here. And you can see that we went from a very high match down to 7% match. That's a huge difference. So then you can break it down from there if you want to, to, to identify other small matches or whatever. But it's a great way to eliminate some of those funky matches that are in there. So how do you know whether a student is retaking class? Because a lot of times I hear instructors say, I don't know if they're retaking. I don't know if they're going to be possibly reusing work. Can you help me understand how to identify that? Well, first of all, the student wants to reuse work from a prior attempt at the same course. They must notify the instructor of that saying, hey, I'm retaking this class. I plan to use some of my prior work. They have to inform the instructor. It's not permission based as far as retaking a class. It's just notification. So students should be telling you they're retaking it if they plan to use some of that same work. Another thing that you could do is reach out to your faculty support and development associate and say, can you help me understand what, is this student retaking this class? class? I just want to confirm that that is the case. Or one of the cool things within Civita or when, within Canvas and also within Civitas is Inspire for Faculty. You can find it in the classroom on the left side of your class. Uh, it's a quick little link. You can open up your classroom, and this is an EXP class that I was just getting ready to start when I took these screenshots, so you can see that not very many of the students are active because it hasn't started yet, but it gives me some screenshots for this uh, presentation. In there, you can see that there's a, a link to see all active students. If you click on that, you can then have a drop-down menu of click to filter students. One of the filters is, students who are retaking the course. If you select that, it will show you all the students who are actually retaking your course. That's great information to know because then you know, oh, that student might be reusing work and that might show up in the Turnitin report. It helps you sort of problem solve the situation. So again, there's a lot of resources available to you. You can always reach out to the, the two key contact points. In this case, there's also gonna be another TLC presentation uh, for plagiarism and recycling and, and either or both. And now what do I do once I figure out what it is? That's going to be done by the lead for our department. And so I'd encourage you to watch that video as well. Um, if you're unable to watch it live, you can at least watch the recording. It'd be some great information there. So 
every once in a while you run into a turn it in report that just is weird looking and in the you have to think about our student population why that might be our students are non-traditional which means they didn't go directly from high school into college many of them have taken breaks from their educational path to uh, start a family to uh, get a job and become productive members of society but when it's time to return back they developed a lot of habits that they're going to rely on and those habits are based in social media so if I liked a post or some information online I'm going to share it I'm going to retweet it I'm going to do whatever the, the term is and for whichever uh, social media platform you're on they're going to use that information it's not always going to be represented well and, and it'll show up really weird in a Turnitin report. So you have to look at it and say, is this the student trying to actually share information and just not citing it that well, or is it something that should throw up more red flags? So you'll see a Turnitin report, it's 34%, so roughly a third of the paper is matching other content. That might be a big red flag for people saying, hey, that shouldn't be. But when you actually look at the paper, the student included the questions for the assignment in or at least the prompts in the assignment they submitted. So that's what's showing up as a match. Of course that's gonna match because other students probably did the same thing. And so when you look at it, don't worry about those matches. You can exclude those individual matches so that you can see if there's anything else or you can just scroll down and see if there's anything else that is matching. But don't panic if you see some matches with it. Turn it in. Turn it in is not a plagiarism determining factor. It is simply giving you information that you would determine whether it's plagiarized or not. Um, so let's look at, a, at an example that you might see in, in a course. This is how to properly cite a section. This is an example that actually the Writing Center uses to show how to cite a uh, constellation or a, an ebook that we have here at Ashford. And so you can see uh, quotation marks around it, then the in text citation. In a student's paper, you might see this version of it. They have the in-text citation, but they don't have the quotation marks around it, and it may be missing or adjusting one or two words. They're, they're trying to get it accurate, but not perfect. So is the student trying to do a direct quote? Most likely that is the case, but it's just showing up as matching because they forgot to put the direct quotes in. They're trying to tell you, I got this from the source. They just didn't do a very good job of finishing it by putting it in direct quotes, or um, maybe they tried to put in their own words, but it's so close to the original that it's not really paraphrasing anymore. But that student is at least showing you, here's the source material, and trying to be a student in my mind. There's a difference between student A and student B. Look at student B. Grown-up progress emphasizes the technical training of variations and actions. It, it doesn't flow as well as the original content, but more importantly, look at how it matches up. They change the word adult to grown up, development to progress, focuses to emphasize. All they're doing is swapping out words. They're not actually trying to interpret information or paraphrase it. They're actually just trying to manipulate it to show that it's not matching content, but they're not actually giving you any original material either. So we call this thesaurus writing, where they're actually just using a thesaurus to swap words out and put in new ones. And it, and it's really interesting, when you look at it in a Turnitin report, it shows sort of Swiss cheese. It shows that most of the stuff matches, but there's words that don't. That should be a tip off that something's a little weird here. So when you do some Google searches, Bing searches, you find some of the original content, and you can see that the word relevant was changed to important, skills were changed to aptitude, youngster to child, or child to youngster, and um, they just toggled those words using thesaurus. But a lot of times, one of the key things to determine whether this is a thesaurus method of writing is that you'll find words that don't make sense or phrases that don't make sense completely out of context. So in here, the instructor was used, or the, the original source was using gross motor skills, but the student changed it to gross engine abilities. That is not correct, obviously. So that should be a tip off that they're using some type of spinning program that will um, change the words around in the content and that'll help you determine how to proceed. 
we do see this from time to time in student papers, and it makes us chuckle when we see it because it's so obvious that it doesn't match up. There was a student that was writing a paper about comparing Target to Walmart, and throughout the paper, they changed the word Target to bullseye. So obviously that's not correct. Another example would be a, a paper that was written about the United States and throughout the paper they called it the Joint States. Uh, we had a, a clinical description of depression, of a medical depression, and throughout the paper they changed it to economic crisis. Again, obviously not right, but here's our favorite ones, our ones that are just so humorous in our eyes. George W. Bush, there was an article written about, um, a, it was a political science class and it was talking about George W. Bush and they used George W. Shrubbery, George W. Bramble, and George W. Hedge. Those make us laugh in our department because it's so obvious of what they're, they're trying to do and not very successfully though. So if you have questions over, uh, am I looking at thesaurus writing? Do I know whether this is plagiarism or not? How should I handle this? You obviously have your two key contact points beyond the college leadership that you're working with. And there's also a TLC session from last year, 2017, that was, is this intentional plagiarism or not? That might help guide you as well. So there's, again, a lot of resources out there. So we hear from time to time also that, hey, I, I know Turnitin is available in Waypoint for the written assignments, but I'd like to run the discussion boards through Turnitin. How do I do that? Well, actually, there's a resource in the CETL library that says, or the, that provides you with that information. So you should be good to go. Just follow the steps in that guide. I'm not gonna go through the whole guide in this presentation, but just show you that's where it's at. You can actually run your, your discussion board post through Turnitin, just following those free, uh, easy steps. And finally, uh, what happens when I submit an iRoad? So like, an iRoad is an instant report of academic dishonesty, but before we get to that point, there's a lot of discretion that instructors have. So as an instructor, if you see that there's a, a writing issue, a a, um, a possible plagiarism and academic dishonesty concern in your classroom, there's a lot of things that you can do within the classroom itself. You can, you can give them a warning and email them directly and provide feedback in the class saying, hey, I see this, be careful of this moving forward. You could ask them to fix it and resubmit the paper or discussion board for full or partial credit. You can just do a point deduction as well, or you can even give them a zero for that assignment. All of those steps though, it's really important. Make sure you're very specific with your feedback. Don't just write in the feedback, this paper's plagiarized. Well, how so? What did they do? Help them understand it so they can fix this moving forward. That's part of the, uh, the coaching feedback that you should provide every student. The things to avoid though, and these are very important, don't create a new assignment. Don't say, well, because of this plagiarism concern, I'm gonna have you write a five page paper on the importance of academic integrity. You, you can't assign external assignments for credit or anything like that in the Azure curriculum. The same is for extra credit. You can't provide them with extra credit on specific assignments because that's not allowed in the curriculum. So as you're working with students, identifying the, the plagiarism concerns or uh, writing concerns, please be aware there are certain things you can do, certain things that you should avoid. But once you decide, I've given the student a zero, but I really think this should be seen by other university individuals for review and added to the student's file, possibly for additional, even, even additional consequences, you can submit an IROAD. The IROAD, again, is the Incident Report of Academic Dishonesty. It's just the acronym we use for it. And the form is on the left there, and you would send it to the address that's actually shown on the form. When you send it in, include all the evidence that you collected as well. So if you found it at a certain website that the content was originally posted and the student borrowed it from there, make sure you include that website information. If you're basing the I wrote on a Turnitin report, make sure you provide us with a copy of the Turnitin report. So once you submit it to us, we're gonna actually go through the Turnitin report and start matching sections up. So you can see here that there's a section, spirits are believed to be everywhere and in everything under the earth and the sky and the water and the treetops, yada, yada. We'll find it in the student's paper that they submitted. We'll highlight it. Okay, there's no references or right, in-text citation, anything like that to show that this is another author's work. So when we do a Google or a Bing search, we can find the original content we will put that all together in the documentation trail when we're working with the student so we can show that here is a section in your paper. It matches this website that we pasted into the, the margin. 
and you can see that there's original content that we actually took a screenshot of and pasted it into the paper. So all that is documented. So for every time that we work with a student and provide a formal feedback and citation, we're showing them exact examples in their paper. And you can do that as well when you're working with the student individually. It's just that's what we do for documentation uh, when we're adding it to the student's file. So that's a lot of information I just went over into this presentation, but I want you to be able to reach out later on if you do have questions. Uh, you obviously have my name and my contact information there. Academic Integrity at Azure.edu is our team's inbox. So you can certainly email and say, hey, can you help me understand what's happening here? I'm not understanding this Turnitin report. I'm not understanding the circumstance. I think something's going on. Uh, you can certainly reach out to us and obviously, uh, faculty support and development are there at all times for you as well throughout the weekend, everything. And, and, and I know your college leadership would be more than happy to help you out as well, but I wanted you to understand there's resources out there at all times available to you. To, so please do reach out. And if you do have questions, I, I'm here to help. Thank you very much and have yourself a great day.